everyone! Welcome back to Slow Words Place FTL. Last episode, we got the victory with the Slow Cruiser Type C. It's a. I was not expecting a victory with our first official run, but you know, I'm I'm glad that was a fun one. Which we really had a lot of fun with suffocation and hacking, which was not a run. It was running probably in the back of my mind, deep down there somewhere. But like when I wasn't, I was considering seriously because I was like, how how viable would that actually be? It turns out it's very viable. If you have the right, right setup, it's very viable. We're gonna go uh, looking for the Type B today, with the Nisos. Let's get started. The data carries ferry files to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for your journey, so make sure you explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. All right, so what do we need? Weapons, that's the big thing right now. Weapons, shields. This is a very basic ship too, like the Type C slow cruiser. A little more basic, even, to the fact where it's a little underpowered. As you jump to the system, a pirate advances on your position. They're refusing all hails. Prepare for a fight. All right. We can also upgrade our artillery beam to have 20 second cooldown. That wouldn't be the worst either, but... Oh, unpause. Really, if we can get something even better than the dual laser. The dual laser is not bad. It's only one power for two shots. That's not bad at all. Nice dodges. Nice dodges. And of course, our goals this episode get the uh, get it to dub and unlock the Type C, which if we get to Sector Eight would do uh, both for us. Or I mean, if we get to win, we we, we get to Sector Eight plus we do both. Their weapons are down. Let's go for their shields next. And, you know, the, the Federation Cruiser is a cool one. But this is a little bit weaker than, you know, the uh, original, the Type A. They offer you some of their cargo if, we, if you let them live. Nah, that's not going to happen. We're going to kill you anyways. The ship explodes you behind scrap of material. All right. Let's, uh, we are going for that nebula eventually. Let's jump up here, though, and see what's around. You stumble across four scouts of the rebel fleet. If you get away, no doubt they'll warn to flee for your position. Okay, let's fight a letter at the piling then, and let's find the dual laser at the weapons. But yeah, you know, the, the Federation Cruiser in general's strength is that it has a backup weapon. and uh, Or a built in weapon, even not a backup weapon. Auto fire as well. Okay. Also, I think I want to switch you guys around at some point. Not right now, but soon. Okay, it's not good. It's good that they have fire, though. Okay, there we go. Now they're delayed. This one I'm okay with using a lot of missiles on, just because we're... We do, we do not want them to get away. You turn this off. Turn this off. Turn. You can turn all this off. There we go. And, oh, beautiful. I'm going to put you here now and put you over here. The ship breaks apart. If you leave the notch, you still one step ahead of the fleet. Let's repair the doors. Nothing, there's no stress beacons or shops up there, so. Put you here in safe positions. You immediately notice a rebel ship chasing what appears to be a civilian transport. However, you're detecting chatter on the encrypted Federation channel. That transport's carrying Federation loyalists. Let's aid the Federation ship. You probably web it to move it to engage. So I've been listening to John Mayer. Like I, I say this a couple episodes ago, and I told you guys to come at me if you if you're gonna judge me. Now I feel a little bit called out, kind of recent. There was uh, not his most recent episode, but one of his most recent episodes. He. Uh, it was about over some shoe brand. He's like, you wear these shoes once. It's like, oh, I wear flannels and I love fall. Yeah, we're going to attack that. I need you to get in there. I need both of you guys to get in there, honestly. Come on. I 
annoying. Very bad, too. We got so far to level there. There we go. Finally, let's go for this. I need both of you guys to repair that door ASAP because we need to air that out. Turn off the Leto. We need to save our missiles. Yikes. Oh, God. You got to be kidding me. We got to take that out. I should have gone for the fucking missile launcher. Damn it. Okay, well, at least, it, at least we got our doors back. Let's air this out. Uh, it does ship destroy you quickly collect useful resources. Let's contact the Federation ship. Thanks for saving us. This uh, ship is transporting uh, the Federation ship. The Federation civilians on the run from the rebellion, and we don't have much equipment to fight for ourselves. We don't have much to offer, but we can inform you of a hidden Federation base nearby. Perhaps they can assist you more. Perhaps. Melissa John Mayer. And, yeah, so it's just Travis Scott video. And I, he's like, oh, and it's like, oh, man, I, I love Starbucks. It's like, oh, man, John Mayer buys Wonderland. Oh, amazing. And so I feel a little called out but I, just because I wear flannels and I like fall. And I think John Mayer is an all right guitarist. And by all right, I mean by actually pretty good. He's pretty, he's a pretty good, damn good guitarist. And he would not know that from his hits. But uh, he is, like, really impressively good. Uh, if you listen to his live album, In the Light, I believe is what it's called. It's his Los Angeles uh, live album. It just shows it. He's got huge, he's, especially during that time, he was uh, heavily influenced by uh, Jimi Hendrix by the looks. He uh, did a cover of Boldest Love on Continuum. Uh, he did a whole bunch more like live covers on uh, the, that live album. Let's... Let's go for this quest. And then we'll head for the nebula, I guess. If we have time. Oh, we did not repair our shields. That's smart. You recognize the ship of a well-known slave trader. He hails from our slavers. We're cheap. We're going to attack the slaver scum because we can get free slaves, you know? But yeah. Uh, and his, by the way, his, Sean, his, his Jimmy Hendrick uh, covers are really good. <laughs> Like, highly, highly recommendable. Let's go for the shields next. But I also kind of agree with, like, especially his early stuff. It's, like, in the peak of, like, two, the early 2000s, uh, soft rock. It's a little rough. <laughs> it's, it's just a little, my rough, I mean cheesy. It's not so much bad. It's just, like, eh. It's not what I really am very interested in listening to. And so, his first album, his E is debut album before he was I think officially signed to any uh, record labels because it's called these are all the EP versions of the songs what it says on Spotify ship appears perhaps FTL trying to escape eh we'll deal with it I don't think they're gonna escape but yeah the, the first album's called Inside Wants Out and then the second album <laughs> okay nope 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 Go dodge. Thank you. And death. So for some slaves, but you know, scraps better than nothing. The slave ship is destroyed. They won't continue their evil trade, but main life's probably lost in that ship. I just realized what I said. How wrong that kind of sounded. <laughs> oh no. Uh, you search the nearby coordinates give it to you, but your search yields no results. Perhaps they were mistaken. What? Oh, that's a shame. Power ship is lying way out the asteroid field. They merely moved to attack. All right, let's go for their weapons. And then yeah, so the, the second album's called "Room Full of Squares." Or no, 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 sorry, "Room Four Squares." Uh, it's it's rough, but you know they have some bangers on there, I, like uh, you know some, some of the radio, radio hit songs, which you know as much as he's gonna have, I'm gonna have to judge them, they, they they are the radio hit songs, the radio play songs even. Go for the weapon system. This run's not going as well as the last run, but you know, it's just a missile launcher. Let's go for the shields too now. The Leto down. The third album is where you kind of see Sean Mayer's least look change, but he 
and he just looked like a high school boy anymore. And it's uh, on the front, they have a high on um, the front of the album covers. But it's still like honestly, his third album, Heavier Things, is probably my least favorite album. It was, I, I I skipped through so many songs so fast. Though it had the reverse effect on me. Like usually for John Mayer albums, at least in the early stuff, it'd be like I liked the, the first songs, but then afterwards the uh, that later half is kind of shit. This in this time it was the first half was really shit for me, but then the uh, later half was at least had some redeeming qualities at the end. But it was still my least favorite album. I think it just was not that good. <laughs> It's kind of the epitome of the soft rock. Uh, it's what I felt like. Okay, there we go. Finally. Let's go for that oxygen. Oh, beautiful. It's cutting out in the middle. Then we get to continue them. Now that's when you start seeing John Mayer kind of flex again. <laughs> I mean, by flex again, I mean start flexing in general. Uh, like, like that's where you... That's where you start seeing John Mayer become a good guitarist. And what, and what I mean by guitarist. Like I said, it has to cover for Boldest Love. You have the Trust Myself, Gravity. Uh, and by the way, these, again, the live versions have are so much better solos in them, too. It's amazing. The ship explodes, leaving behind substantial collections of scrap material. Uh, then you get to the In the Light album. I'm not through it yet, but it's just there's so many songs on it. I gotta say, that might be my favorite John Mayer album, and it might be my favorite uh, live album. <laughs> There's just not a lot of live albums that do for me the way that album does. You, you can, John Mayer gets really into it, you can feel the energy, and it's because it's, it's so much, the songs are better versions than the originals, I like, it, I can't help but really enjoy this album and really respect too, because it's just, John Mayer's so good. It has so many, like, all blues and Jimi Hendrix songs on it, which be, some of the blues songs are Jimi Hendrix songs. Jimi Hendrix, by the way, is a bit of a, you might not know this. He's actually a bit of a blues uh, blues performer. He did revolutionary stuff with that. And you can even, you can hear it too, like in BBC statues and how he first heard a band that way. Uh, let's go to here. Maybe we can hit that last nebula. We're going to be pretty close for sure. And fans football automated ship remains stationed uh, near a small rebel space station. However, without functioning sensors, it's possible to tell what's inside. Yeah, let's attack it. I don't give a shit. There's no shields, anyways. I like said, I'm not even through it yet, and I'm just, it's just so good. Annoying. Get here. I gotta heal up my guys too. Nice dodges. Nice dodges. Luckily, right now, because of the low threat this ship brings us, we can probably heal up our guys. But yeah, that that, that album I really respect. He's. If, if, if you want to know what I mean by John Mayer's a good guitarist, all you need to do is listen to the album. You might want to skip past the first four songs, because those songs are pretty good too, guitar-wise, but they're like acoustic. So you don't really sense it as much at first. When you get to some of the latest songs, like with the electric solos, oh man, dude, they're... I'm just blown away every time. You saw which way you came from the broken ship. Let's investigate the station. The station was either abandoned or stripped clean. It seems to have been for you on you for quite some time. That's fine. We got free resources, so that's... Or not free, but... We, I don't think we took any damage, or we took very little, at least. Oh, perfect. We can make it. Still need weapons. It's worrying that the rebels have penetrated so deep in uncharted space, even if it's only on a man craft. It arms its weapons. You should do the same. And I'm okay with that. You know, at least we're getting scrap. Oh, my neck. Okay, let's go. They can't hurt us, so that's good. But yeah, and you know, I'm, I was a little worried at first, especially when I was like, seeing two John Mayer, because I'm like, oh man, does he only have like a couple good guitar songs, but he's actually kind of not that good? 
But now I'm, I'm, I'm glad that my confidence has been reaffirmed that John Mayer is, in fact, a good guitarist. He's definitely not my favorite artist of all time, but he's definitely up there. Definitely one of my respected artists, and I might have to put that live album on my, on my wall of, of albums. I have a, in case you don't know, I have a, uh, which probably don't, I have a, uh, a, a wall of respected albums in my apartment. That's the best way to describe it. It's not even like a complete wall. It's like more like a little set of a wall that has like, these uh, square album covers printed off on the foam core. And I, those, those are the albums I respect. It's tangled wreck of many ships waiting dormancy here. You see a light flicker and it looks like debris. A rebel scout bursts out of the wreckage. Oh my god. What's with all the rebel scouts and those shields? I mean, I love it, honestly. They all have EMP and... Uh, rockets too, which makes no sense. Why would you have an EMP when your rocket appears to do shields? Dummies. Okay, anyways, let's uh, repair this. And I'm actually really excited. Next, I'm going to listen to Nirvana, which is a complete 180 from <laughs> John Mayer. But, um, yeah, I'm listening to some Nirvana next. I'm kind of doing like a... So, I did my two R's I knew. Which was, I can't remember. I did My Chemical Romance and then I did The White Stripes. Now I'm going to do, uh, like, now I'm doing Sean Mayer, which is kind of like, it's 2000, it's, it's like 20 years old. Like, his, some of it, he, he has a 20 year old career at this, at this point. So it's technically old, but like, not super old. So it's going to be him, then Nirvana, which is like 10 years younger. And then it's going to be, uh, Pink Floyd, which is even like 40 years younger from like from the 1970s, like 20 years younger from there. The ship exploding behind scrap material. Part of that math didn't work out, but I think at the end, the 20 years further works better. The crew are constantly looking out the windows, checking for hostiles. The creek at every creak and moan of the ship uh, chumps, makes them jump. The tension is almost palpable. Let's go here. Looks like we could have maybe fit one more beacon, but the routing on this map was kind of rough. You arrive in a long-range beacon when you have Tail Travis charge, jump to the next sector. You spot a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to be refitted for transport rather than combat. And it's not want to engage your ship. Prepare to secure the cargo by force. They don't want to fight. They're going to try to escape. Okay. We're probably not going to be able to stop this ship. We can try, but I doubt it. Unless our artillery beam can do work. No, there's no way. Just, just, just turn off the let up, please. Okay, maybe. Maybe now. Hmm. Don't think so. Come on, artillery beam. You can do it. Nah, it's not gonna happen. Oh, we, we just cunned them just there, too. Now, now that wouldn't matter if we not stopped their engines. Alright, let's, uh... Looks like we didn't have time for another sector, either. Let's go engine control sector, because it's better than civilian sector. And we need a shop really bad for hull repair and for weapons. You arrive in an engine space, the fall of the Federation has brought tough time to these robotic life forms, but they're usually willing to help. Okay, perfect. Store and shop. Let's go to Stress Beacon here, store. We have, I think we can make it work. Just wanna see what's that's just a Stress Beacon first. You follow the uh, Stress Signal to a tiny sh asteroid belt. You find a small ship struggling to maneuver through the field. You respond, help our shields down, we won't last long. Sure, we'll shield them. Despite your best efforts, the civilian ship breaks apart. From the constant barrage, you'll be able to break out the asteroid field yourself. The ship sustains damage, all right. It's fun. Debris from the battle is scattered around the system. A or from a battle it'll is uh, scattered on the system. A few pieces bounce against your ship. You pass the scan and discover this functional weapon. That's pretty good. The entry ship hails entrance upgrade necessary for travel home. Sale of equipment necessary for engine upgrades. All right. Damn it. There's another store. I was thinking about maybe getting camo, but we can't really risk it right now. NG, I can do remarkable things just a pile of scrap. The NG hive at the speaker and selling equipment just for that. Perfect. All right.
Let's get some hull repair too. What am I doing? Store, sell. Honestly, we're gonna sell both these two so we can get maybe a uh, focus on getting shields up. And once we get one more power, we should be set to do that. The Delk land, get back to position. Let's go here. A federation of cryptid signals being broadcast from a nearby planet with sort of way parts of escape. You find a secret federation outposts. They are regrettably out of supplies, but eager to tell you of another secret base, they give you the coordinates. All right, let's, let's go this way, it's fastest. A complex arrangement of ship hulls and FTL track capacitors floating abandoned space suggests that we were here not too long ago, but not long, not any longer. If we get here, we go like this, I guess, if we have time. It's gonna be cutting it close. And what first seems to be a simple nebula is filled with a good amount of debris and from brutal exchange between shovel ships. Uh, wreckage shift from your screen and tumbles to the depth of the nebula to be lost to sight. It's hard to determine who to combat or without a close investigation. As you approach the, uh, the wreckage, a slug ship makes its arrival, hesitant at, for a moment, as a surprise CA remaining, then jumps away without a word. You resume the scan, where if any other visitors. Wow, well, nothing then. Boring. I think we should be able to make it. You find a planet indicated by the coordinates. Your initial scans show the planet's barren of devoid of life, but you prompt a reply when you're broadcast on Federation frequencies. Hello, some nice see friends. We'll bring up some supplies. That's a good drone. And that's good power. Okay, next we're probably going to focus on artillery beam, but we do have enough time to make it here and in the exit beacon, so let's do that. You jump to the aftermath of what seems to be brutal exchange between several ships. Wreck is shifted by your screen. You can only see the remains of dying ships sparking and breaking apart. It's hard to determine who the combatants are with our close investigation. You approach the wreckage. A slug ship? Yep. Okay, we already we just had that happen. It's deja vu. Which was all these slug uh, ship battle battlefields? That's all. That's what I want to know. You arrive at the long range beacon when you have to drive charge. You can jump to the next sector. Let's go. When you ask the nearby station for aid, a friendly programmer gives you its command for a drone. All right, we're probably gonna. Ah, oh, shit, though. I think we gotta probably go rebel controlled sector. I wish it was the abandoned sector instead, but we. Really don't want to go through nebulas. We can kind of avoid them going through here. We have a lot of hostile sectors as well. But thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, comment, like, subscribe. See you next time. Peace out.